suppose that we have an object traveling around a circle of radius 50 meters at 10 meters per second, say. Constant velocity, it doesn't really matter 10 meters per second, any other velocity. We're not actually going to use that 10 meters per second yet. Now, at this point, the velocity is perpendicular to a radial line, and at this point, the velocity is perpendicular to a radial line. I'm not sure I've drawn those all that well. But at some time, t equals t1 will have a velocity v1 like this, and at a later time, t equals t2 will have a velocity v2 like this. What we want to do is we want to determine if there is an acceleration in this situation. Now remember, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, not the rate of change of speed. Speed isn't changing. Speed is 10 meters per second everywhere. But velocity also has direction, so that we're changing direction. And the question is, do we therefore have an acceleration? Well, yes, we do. We have to have an acceleration to change direction. You can experience this acceleration driving around a curve in the car. <clears throat> you can stand in the back of a pickup truck and have somebody go around a curve fast and watch how you have to lean and how you have to exert force to stay in the circle. You'll find that you have to keep pushing toward the center of the circle. If we draw the velocity vectors v1 and v2 with a common origin, they don't have a common origin up here, but remember these are vectors. Uh, they just they represent our two velocities. They don't have to have the same origin to compare them, to be compared. Uh, we see that there's a vector going from the tip of v1 to the tip of v2, and we could uh, see by vector addition that v1 plus this little red vector here that goes to the tip of v2 will have to equal v2. This is a picture of v1 plus the red vector equals v2. Well, the red vector turns out to be delta v, the change in velocity, because if v1 plus the red vector equals v2, then the red vector is v2 minus v1, which is, of course, the change in velocity. v2 minus v1 is our change in velocity, and that's depicted then by this red vector. And, of course, we note the reasoning here. Since v1 plus delta v equals v2, delta v is v2 minus v1. Now we consider what happens if we have a small delta v corresponding to a small time interval delta t. If delta v is small, we have v1 here and v2 here. And we have our delta v going from here to here. I drew it up a little bit higher. You can imagine bringing it down and putting it there to go point to point. The three vectors would form a triangle. If the magnitudes of v1 and v2 are equal, corresponding to motion around the circle, at a constant speed, then what we have here is an isosceles triangle. This isosceles triangle has an apex angle, which if delta v is small is very small, and then two equal angles here and here. Since the apex angle is very small, these two angles are going to add up to something very close to 180 degrees. They're going to add up to 180 degrees minus whatever that small apex angle is. And they're going to have to be equal if you think about it, that means they're going to have to be close to 90 degrees. So that V1 and V2 are both close to being 90 degrees from the delta V. Okay? And that's the reasoning that we've written out here. This means that our acceleration, which is a limit as delta T goes to zero of our delta V over delta T, well, as delta T goes to zero, our delta V vector is going to shrink down and down and down, and our apex angle is going to approach zero. That means that the angle is going to approach, uh, the angle of the delta V vector is going to approach perpendicular to the V vector. So that when we divide the delta V vector by delta T, which is just a number, that that result is going to be perpendicular to the velocity. So the acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity. Now remember that the velocity makes a right angle with the radial line. So if the acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity, the acceleration is perpendicular to the radial line and points in toward the center. It points in toward the center because V2 minus V1 is pointing this way.